Here are a few tips for working with some of the cutting and slicing and dividing tools in Illustrator that can make your life kind of a either good or bad. <laughs> so I've got a bus out here and what I'd like to do is I've got this shape over here on the right and I'd like to divide it in half. So I'd like to cut it in half. Maybe I want to split them or make them wider or whatever. You'll notice that if I click on it, I can see that there's a group here and I can tell it's a group because a bunch of stuff selects, right? So what I typically do is with my selection tool, I'll double click to get into the group. This goes in isolation mode. And if it's still not, if it's still grouped, it's maybe a group of a group. I can double click again and click to select the individual object. Now I'm going to move this over a little bit. You guys will notice that if I hover over stuff, I have smart guides selected. Now smart guides will save your butt. Most of the time. Sometimes they're annoying, but most of the time they'll save your butt. So you guys want to make sure that under view, they are turned on. You can see them right here. Now, to divide this in half, a couple ways to do it. If I go over to my tools, tools panel over here, you can see we've got the eraser tool, which whatever. If I go under the eraser tool, we're going to see the scissors tool and the knife tool. Big difference between these two. Scissors tool will actually cut a path, but make it an open path. So it won't close it. So you can't put a stroke all the way around it. The knife tool will actually close it. So I'm going to use the knife tool here. The problem is, look at the knife tool. I mean, it's like trying to cut with a butter knife. Give me a break. So to be precise, what we can do is you can press caps lock. And what that tends to do is give you the precise cursor. Now the problem here is I don't know exactly where I see that point right there, but I can't quite get halfway. This is a little rough. I'm going to show you a better method for doing this, but I do want to show you a nice tip with the knife tool here. If you guys want to cut in a straight line, right now if I click and drag, it's going to do this kind of weird thing. Let me undo that. If you're cutting a straight line, you guys, we can actually hold down the shift key, and you can take a look here. It's still not going to do it, right? Most tools will let us do that. Let me undo. If I hold down the Alt on Windows or Option on Mac, click and drag, you can create a straight cut. Now, if you want to make it perpendicular or whatever, straight up and down, you can hold the shift key at the same time. So Alt, Shift on Windows, Option, Shift on Mac, click and drag through, let go of the mouse, let go of the keys, and you got yourself a straight cut. Problem is it's not right in half. So let me undo that. Here's a nice method for cutting something directly in half, if you know. Make sure the, the smart guides are showing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line. This is kind of wacky, but I'm going to come right on the anchor point here, if you guys can see this. Click and drag right on the anchor there. Hold down the shift key. Just come straight down, and I'm going to draw a line. Simple line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press D to go to default. That'll set the default stroke and fill. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the object behind it, it's called. So if I come up under object, come to path, you guys will see something called divide objects below. I don't know how many of you use this. I don't. I use it once in a while, but this is a great little little uh, use for it. Choose divide objects below, and it'll just cut the thing in half. Okay. So that way you're using the smart guides to figure out where the point is, drawing a straight line, and then just dividing it. Now I could keep dividing it further if I keep drawing lines and things like that, but I don't want to do that. All right. One last little tip here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this half now. It is a closed path, which is cool. So if you guys want to put a stroke on it, you can do that. I'll just you know slap a little stroke on there. You guys can see it's white. Now I'm going to show you guys how to do something with a transformation here, which is kind of cool. Let me get back in here. I'll double click a couple times and select. If you guys have an object and you want to, let's say, copy it, flip it, and then kind of get this thing to go together, what we can do is we can actually use the reflect tool. So if I come over here to my Reflect tool, you'll see it's actually underneath the Rotate tool. I'll go to Reflect tool. I personally, I, I hate the Reflect tool. I really do. Um, but there's a nice easy shortcut you guys can use with it. You'll notice there's a little, um, little crosshairs right here, which says here's what we're going to reflect around. So if I start clicking and dragging, you'll see what it does. It reflects around that point. So let me undo. What we can do is we can actually click somewhere else to set the reflect point. But a quick tip here, a quick shortcut is, I want to reflect it around the anchor point right up here in the corner, and I want to do it by dialog. I don't want to have to drag this stupid thing so I can copy it. So if you hold down the Alt key on Windows, Option on Mac, you'll see a little minus. Hover over the anchor point, click with your mouse, and you get the Reflect dialog. Select Preview, turn it on and off. You can see, there we go. Click Copy, and you got yourself an exact copy. We can then go in, use a Pathfinder command, and just simply join these two together, and we've got it. So just some quick shortcuts for being able to work with cutting, dividing, and uh, reflecting objects.